What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Joseph and in today's video I'll be going over what time frames you want to be using when you're trading stocks. A lot of beginners ask this question what time frame they should use and it kind of can get confusing because there's so many different time frames out there so in today's video i'll break it down for you guys show you what specific time frames you want to be using for your trading style if you want to enjoy this video make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and then also if you want to be a part of a free discord community make sure to check out the discord channel in the description down below Alrighty guys, now that I have the chart pulled up, I'm going to go into further depth on which time frames you want to be using for your specific trading style. So first and foremost, I am on the daily time frame and the best way to look at time frames is you want to ask yourself how long do you want your trade to play out. So if I'm on the daily time frame and I'm looking for a swing trade, um, typically it's going to take a longer time for it to play out because each candlestick, as you can see, is a uh, one day of price action so every day a new candlestick is formed on the daily time frame that's how time frames work so if i zoom out a little bit I, as you can see i drew out this uh upward channel on google and if i was looking to play a trade on google and i saw it reaching back to this uh, support line on the trend and i look to place my trade here as you can see it took google quite a while to reach back to the top of that trend and that's because i'm on the daily time frame the candles take longer to play out so if you don't have a lot of time to look at charts or you're pretty busy and you don't really want to uh, watch charts all day a higher time frame is recommended there'll be cleaner setups and you won't really have to worry about checking up on the chart every single second of the day or you could also even go as high as the weekly or monthly time frame if you're more of a longer term investor. So that is the daily time frame. Um, I can pull up another chart for you guys to show you a better example. If we pull up SPY, and with SPY, I usually use moving averages because it's a nice uptrending uh, ETF. And as we can see, SPY uses this uh, moving average right here, the 100 SMA, as support whenever it dips to it. As you can see over here, it dipped to that moving average and then started to bounce. It dipped to this moving average again and then started to go up from there. So if you're looking for a setup on the daily time frame, this is perfect. Um, you could place your trade right around these moving averages. And then as I said before, it takes longer for the stock to go back in the upward direction. Now, another time frame that is uh, recommended that I usually like to look at a few times is the one hour time frame. And as I said before, the shorter the time frame, the quicker the uh, trades would be. So on the one hour time frame, you could find a more setup. So if you're just getting into trading and you want to get more practice in, the one hour time frame is perfect because it's not too fast to where you're trying to make a quick decision and it's not too long to where you have to wait a full day for the candlesticks to form out. So the one hour is actually very perfect. It can act as uh, day trading or swing trading depending on the setup. So right here I have uh, Best Buy and let me go ahead and remove these uh, moving averages so we could see the chart better. So right here with Best Buy and I did say I'm on the one hour time frame. right here I see a downward channel break on Best Buy. As we can see if we connect the uh, tops right there Best Buy was acting as resistance right here on these uh, on this resistance. And once it finally got that breakout right here on Friday, which was the 20th, this was a sign to go long. So if you're on the one hour time frame and you mapped out this setup, this is one that you can uh, take a trade right here at open on Friday and look for a nice move to the upside. Now, because we are on the one hour time frame, the candlesticks will play out faster and your trade wouldn't take that long to play out. So you will find a lot more setups if you go down to smaller time frames. you'll find more breakouts, things of that nature. So if you're looking for setups or you're just learning and you want to practice your trading skills, definitely use the one hour time frame. You'll find plenty of different setups on the stock. We have another breakout right here that uh, took a lot longer though on Best Buy right there. Uh, and then you'll also find a lot of support areas as well for the stock if you want to play a support bounce. So that is the one hour time frame. As I said before, you'll find plenty of different setups and they will take quicker to uh, 
to play out. So when it comes to picking the expiration for the one hour time frame, you could pick the weeklies or you could even go a week or two out because as I said before, the setup is on the one hour and it wouldn't take that long to play out. And another time frame that I do recommend using is the one minute or the three minute time frame. And this would be primarily for uh, day trading. So right here I have Tesla pulled up on the one minute time frame. And as you guys can see right away, uh, this is the full day of chart for Tesla and each candlestick is one minute. So if you're, if you have a lot of time to look at the charts, if you want to make split decisions, the one minute time frame, the three minute even is a little bit uh, more forgiving, but this is primarily for day trading. As I said before, you're looking to get in and out of your play. And if I zoom in, let's say on here, right here on the one minute time frame, I see that there's a support on Tesla right around 779. So let's say you're watching Tesla form out throughout the day and you marked out the support level on your chart. Well, you could look to play that bounce right here once it reaches that support area again. So knowing that there was a support line right around Tesla at 779, you could look to day trade this bounce back up towards the upside and at the very low 779 went up to a high of 784 so that was a five dollar move that you could have potentially caught if you're day trading and with those expirations you're obviously picking closer expirations because those move the most and they would make you the most money in if it goes in your favor so on the one minute time frame three minute time frame even five you'll find a lot of different setups throughout the day and those are mainly used for getting in and out of your position within that same day. So that is how you use time frames. Remember, the higher the time frame, the longer your trades will take to play out. The shorter the time frame, the quicker your trades would be. And if you're just starting out, as I said before, and you're looking to get a lot of practice, the one hour would be perfect. Definitely zoom out on your chart when you use the one hour so you could see um, a lot more. I put the one hour 90 days on thinkorswim so that it will show 90 days of data so that way you could uh, look for as many setups as you want so let me know if you have any questions in the comment section down below and if you learn anything from this video make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss when i upload see you in the next one